Hey, hon, where are you? Hey, babe, I'm in the snake room. Oh, okay. Um, did you decide yet what movie you want to go see tonight? Um, you know, I really haven't given it much thought. I was thinking, you want to go check out Oppenheimer? <laughs> okay. Um, it just kind of looks like you really would rather see Barbie. Oh, honey, I'm a grown man. I don't want to see a movie about a little girl's doll. Okay. All right, fine. Um, then I will go get the tickets for Oppenheimer. Okay, actually, you know, honey, pick any movie you want to go see. It really doesn't matter to me. Okay. okay. Yeah, but, um, just, just make sure it has Barbie in it. Welcome to video number 47, guys. I missed you all. I hope you missed me. I've been, uh, well, I've been hiding from the aliens. That's what I've been doing. Have you guys been watching these congressional hearings with these alien sightings with the whistleblowers? I never believed in aliens before. I believe in them now. If you think I'm crazy, watch it for yourself and then tell me what you guys think. Um, video number 47, let's kick it off. I have so much to get to. Fish tank people, all my fish tank people out there, always give me advice on the fish tank. Discus are kicking butt. Temperature's 84 degrees. Weekly water changes, good food. I'll feed them for you guys right now. Check this out. Look, they're crazy. They're monsters. They actually bite my hands when I put them in there. And I added some Ultim Angels to the tank, as you can see in there as well. But the fish tank is kicking butt. I'm super happy with it. I plan to add a few more discus and more cardinal tetras and stuff, so I'll keep that going. Um, so what are we going to get into today's video? I have some new animals that came in. Uh, I moved the project out. I got a bunch of eggs in the incubator right now. I hatched out a bunch of babies. I'm starting feeding trials, yada, yada, yada. I'm adding up, uh, making some modifications to some cages. I'm going to show you guys everything I've been doing lately. Good friend of mine, AJ, just had a litter of Sanzinia babies. I want to show you some pics of his babies, get you guys excited about some baby Sanzinia that just came into the world. And uh, I think that's going to get us started. So I think we should just get started and kick into today's video. Hey guys, I thought I would start out this video by showing you some babies that recently hatched and uh, some that have not even shed out yet, some that have recently shed. Um, but before I do that, uh, Reach Out Reptiles, Garrett Hartle, a friend of mine. I've known Garrett for probably, I don't know, six, seven years, uh, actually before his YouTube channel. And why am I mentioning Garrett today and Reach Out Reptiles is because uh, he's a great friend, but more importantly than that, what I love that he does is that we became, why we became friends is because as like we are into our boils as far as localities with green tree pythons, he is an absolute nut when it comes to uh, localities of uh, reticulated pythons. And I love those Karampa reticulated pythons. They stay really small. Um, they're from a small to small island of Karampa, and I started talking to Garrett about it. Anyway, I think he runs an amazing organization. I love his passion for the animals. The guy is so into the animals. So if you're looking for any locality, especially the ones that stay small, these dwarf or ticks, please check out Garrett at Reach Out Reptiles. Him and his team are just, they're just awesome people, and I got to know them. Uh, pretty well over the last few years. Okay, with that being said, let's just jump into some babies that I just recently hatched out. Let's just show you a baby that I probably showed off on one of the last videos as well. This is an Amazon Basin Emerald baby. I did not produce this baby. I'm just showing it to you because since the last video, which I shot probably almost two months already, it just put on such size. Um, you know what? I had 20 of these babies to sell, two separate litters, and uh, they say the reptile market is slow, but um, you guys bought every single one of these babies from me over the past like six weeks, so thanks so much for that. I just wanted to show you the size on this and how the white's coming out as well. So let's put this animal back. That one's going off to its new owner as soon as the temperatures go below like 120 degrees outside. And let's show you guys some jungle carpets that just hatched. Uh, these are just pure jungle carpets. I showed you the, the adults. I'll put a picture up of them as well. I showed them in the last video. Just some, there's 20 babies or 20 eggs. Actually, you know what? There were 20 eggs and there were 21 babies. I had one set of twins. These animals have not yet shed. I'm going to show you some babies that did shed from this clutch. Some of them just take so long to have their first sheds. It's no rhyme or reason for it. And that's what I started doing. I'm taking, a, I'm following suit by the ball python people. A lot of times I notice the ball python people will leave their babies together in the incubator in the same hatch box until they go through their first sheds. And I'm doing that with some of the jungles right now. You can see there's some more over here in this group. So yeah, there's about, I don't know, eight of them right now between both boxes that have not yet shed. And every morning I go through, I keep them in the incubator. I change the water at them every single day. And as they shed, this is what I do with them. I put them in these boxes, just like this. This animal has not only has it shed, but it also took its first meal. I give them a little perch from uh, the reptile perch from David Brahms. Uh, they seem to do e even really well uh, off the perches. They love the idea of striking down. A little high spot, a little water bowl, and I will just keep them like this and for probably until they're sold. Get them sexed. I'll get them all posted on uh, Morph Market over the next few weeks. So this is how I keep my babies. 
Another thing when you're with, with carpet pythons, guys, how do I get them started to feed them? I start out with every baby, eight ounce deli cup, seventh generation hand soap. I take frozen thawed fuzzy mice. I start with frozen thawed fuzzy mice. I wash them while they're frozen with the seventh generation hand soap. It's colorless, it's odorless, there's no chemicals in here, no dyes or anything like that. I get all the scent off the frozen fuzzy mouse. I do this with all my carpet pythons. And then I put the carpet python in here with the frozen thought fuzzy. I put it in at night and I leave it overnight in the animal's shoebox. And then I come in the next morning and I'm telling you, if you do that with carpet pythons, if you do it with a 12, like I say, a dozen of them overnight, I will bet my life right now, six of them will have taken, after, after they shed, of course, six of them will eat for you on the first try, the time you do that. Then I'll take those six that did not eat and I'll do that same thing. I'll wait a few days later, I'll try the same thing with a rat pinky. And then hopefully some of them will eat the rat pinkies. The ones that have not yet eaten the rat pinkies like that overnight or frozen thawed mice fuzzies overnight, I will then try my first feeding with the live fuzzy. I'll do the same thing. I'll wait make another three days before I try feeding them again. Same thing with baby. Eight ounce deli cup, I'll put a live mouse fuzzy in there. I'll leave them overnight. And usually by that time, the majority will have eaten. You're always going to have the stragglers, the ones that take longer to feed, but that's a great feeding tip for you guys. And I try it out and let me know how it goes. So these are the jungle carpets I just hatched. And this is another... Let me hatch up two of these, and I'll show you guys. These are uh, Gamma Diamond Jungle Jaguars. That's a 75% diamond. And the thing about them is because they're such high percentage diamond pythons, these things hatched in June. I only hatched out two of them. The entire clutch was only two babies, and they're both jaguars. These will be outstanding, bait, outstanding when they hit about a year old. But uh, I, I noticed the higher percentage animals that are diamond pythons, I should say higher percentage diamond pythons, they just take longer to eat. But I don't stress out. These animals have great weight on them. And I, I, I find, it's been my experience, I get them to eat frozen thought quicker than I get them to eat live. Um, so I'll do that same thing I just mentioned to you guys. Cup them overnight with the washed frozen thought fuzzy, frozen thought wrap pink. And just when you the least expect that they're going to eat, they wind up eating. So those are the carpets I hatched out, and now let's jump into some uh, what I have going on with the Savu pythons. I know a lot of you guys are just mostly into arboreals, and I'm always throwing these Savu pythons down your throat, but I just love them. I love them because they stay so small. You get that like Indonesian python vibe from like the water python vibe in a very small package, and they go through an onogenic color change, and they're pretty easy to breed, and the babies kick butt, and those are the reasons I love Savu pythons, and I'm super excited because one of my silver girls just gave me a clutch of eggs. They don't lay a lot of eggs, which is why you don't see a lot of Sabus available. I, I think a lot of people do have some difficulty breeding them, and uh, they only give you small clutches of eggs. But there's five eggs in here. They were laid on July 22nd. They'll hatch out about 50 days. Um, and these are silver, so babies should be either silver or het for silver. And this is the female that laid the eggs. And you can see her. She's looking a little dark right now, but she's a really pretty girl. And I love them. You can just kind of go in. They get a little cage defensive sometimes, but literally I just go right in, pick them up. I always say I've never been bitten by one of my Savu pythons. Um, the other reason I love them is because they, they literally, they tell you when they're ready to breed. I mean, they really do everything you need to know. This snake will tell you. Um, they're super easy to palpate for follicles. And as soon as you start feeding those, feeling those follicles, I mean, you throw a male in with them, they lock up almost instantly. And, um, yeah, I love them. And so I have this clutch right here. What I'm going to show you guys right now is I have another female. I'm going to put her back. Get in there, sweetheart. Get in there. So let's put her back. And then I'm going to show you. I have three clutches, I think, on the horizon for this year. This girl, this silver girl. This silver girl. Honey, want to come in here one second? Because I'm going to mm -hmm. show I think I was going to take her out and show you guys, but actually she's locked up as you can see with the male right now she's locked up with a normal male you can't see much but yeah that silver is the female and that brownish is the male so from this clutch this girl's thrown me a little bit because i palpated her i definitely feel like three follicles in her she just shed out though about a week so that the timing of that is not really working right but i'm a thousand percent positive she has follicles in her so she shed she went off feed i tried feeding her two nights ago and I threw the mail in with her yesterday. We had some storms coming through. So here's what I'm going to tell you. It's just the, the timing is off. Typically what they'll do is they'll start producing some follicles. I'll put the males in with them. And after the follicles get to a certain size, the females will go off, off shed. Then they ovulate. And this girl's doing things all out of order. And I'm surprised there's only three follicles in her, too, for a girl this size. She's given me like five or six eggs all the time in the past. So 
I will keep you posted on her, but the bottom line is I'll get something from her. I feel pretty confident with that. I just don't know what yet. And this girl here, just a normal Sabu girl, this girl is doing everything on schedule. She, uh, I palpated her. I felt about six or seven follicles in her. And you always palp, it's, it's so much easier to palpate follicles in eggs. I think because follicles are just far more dense, even though they're smaller. And I could, I could easily palpate a follicle. Once they ovulate after that, it's really difficult to get a vibe of how many eggs are in there. At least for me, it is. Um, so anyway, this girl is also gravid. You can see her. She's got a nice size to her. She'll be laying her eggs in about 20 days. She's looking very dark right now. But again, super sweet. She'll come right out. And she's proven for me in the past. So I have four female Savus. Looks like three are going to go this year. One's not going to go. But... Um, so she's going to produce theoretically all normal Savu pythons. So if you're looking for Savu pythons, whether it's hep for silver or silver and um, some normals, I should have all those babies, hopefully, as long as I get good eggs from her, uh, later this season. So um, you guys can wish me luck on that. Hey guys, and speaking of new babies, I want to send a big congratulations out to the original Mr. and Mrs. Trap Talk. MJ and Lily Juarez on the arrival of baby Leo. I'm so excited for you guys. Congratulations. You're going to be an amazing set of parents. And uh, I'm really excited because I'm getting a new subscriber out of the deal. I also want to thank, uh, I'm sorry, congratulate my friend AJ. Uh, he goes by uh, AJ Serpents on Facebook. And AJ just had a beautiful litter of nine Mandarin Sanzinia. Babies are phenomenal. Put some pictures up. And again, it is AJ Serpents on Facebook, and I know AJ down the road will be making all those babies available once they're established. So again, AJ Serpents on Facebook, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, check him out when you get a chance. And on a more serious note, guys, let's continue to keep our friends Brian Barcheck and actually Chris Eaton, we have to add to that list in our thoughts and prayers. As you know, Brian has been dealing with cancer now for quite some time, but he recently got some positive news. Let's keep that Let's keep this going in that same direction of positive news for Brian. And in, in the case of Chris Eaton, Chris, better known as Snakes and the Batman, Chris, uh, he recently posted he had some serious medical issues going on. Um, he seems to be in a lot of pain, unfortunately. So let's wish him, po again, positive thoughts and prayers. And let's hope that he's feeling much better, uh, much sooner than later. And uh, we're thinking of you guys, and we hope you all feel better soon. I also wanted to show you guys some uh, new animals I recently acquired, or at least one animal I recently acquired. I'm going to take him out. I have the hook because he's a 13-year-old Stardust male. I got him from my buddy Dan Vermilia. Uh, Stardust, pure diamond male. San Diego Zoo stock, Gary Val stock, all the good genetics are in there. It's a pure animal. Um, I needed a backup Stardust male. Unfortunately, I lost my male last year, and so I needed to pick this guy up, and I think he's going to get the job for me get the job done for me this year with some diamond python. So let's take him out for you. But his feeding response is like ridiculous, okay? So I'm just telling you, so I always use the hook on him. He's taking shots at the glass all the time, every time I take him out. But just a really pretty, he's more of a black and white animal. Killer feeder, just a beautiful diamond male. I love this guy. So I picked him up about two months ago, and I'm gonna start cycling him later this year, and hopefully he's gonna get the job done with uh, one of my females. I really, the goal for me this year is diamond pythons in eastern San Diego. So, had a really difficult time getting my room cold enough last year um, since I got the basin redone, but I'm uh, going to make some modifications and hopefully this year will be the year of diamond pythons for me and the year of eastern green sandy. I know a lot of you folks out there are looking for them. So, let's get him back. He's really pretty. I'm going to show you an animal now that I recently sold as well um, because. It's a Jaguar. It's actually the only Jaguar I still own. I sold off a lot of my Jaguar pro uh, projects, and not because I don't love Jaguars. I especially love this Jaguar. She's, again, like 75 Actually, she's 75% um, diamond, and she is the uh, dam of the baby that I showed you earlier in the Jaguar. She's super bright yellow. Again, a strong, strong feeding response. And here, baby. Come on. No, I'm not feeding you. I'm going to show you how pretty she is. She's so gorgeous, right? How bright and yellow she is. I hope it's coming out on the film. But she's going to a good friend of mine. He's going to give her a great home. Definitely wants to work with the project. Her sire was a stardust male. And I produced some amazing, some amazing offspring from this girl. So, um, yeah, she's heading off to a new home. And it's simply because of space, guys. That's it. It's, that's the only reason I sold off my Jaguar project. It's just because I just, I am out of room. It's just that simple. So yeah, that's one new animal that came in. This girl is going out, and um, I have some other cool stuff that's coming in. I will tell you uh, guys about uh, shortly. 
Okay, so I mentioned getting some additional new animals, and they are of the lizard variety. I'm going to tell you guys a lot more about that in a later video. I'm super excited. I hope it all pans out, but hopefully I'm going to be getting some really cool skinks here in the near future. And because I'm doing that, I had to make some modifications to my cages. Actually, you know what? I made modifications for two reasons. For the skinks that are coming in, as well as for my diamond pythons. Right now, for my diamond pythons, I'm using radiant heat panels to heat their enclosures. Um, I'm trying to eliminate the belly heat with diamond pythons. It's proven to kill fertility in males. So um, I always want to go with above heat for my diamond pythons. Um, but I took it one step further than irradiant heat panels. I'm changing everything over to, like we used to do like 20 years ago, above the cage heating, right, with the light bulbs. That's what I'm doing. So I took my four-foot boa file cages. And also, you know, very quickly, i got to thank my friend Ashley Howie over at um, Focus Cube Habitat Cages for just giving me so much help with uh, picking out the right fixtures and the right lights. And her and Steve and Howdy over at Focus Cube, they just, man, if you want to know about lighting, they just, they are, uh, they're light geeks. And I say that in the best way possible. They really know their stuff. And also my friend Tony Hurt, who gave me some advice in this area as well. So what am I doing, guys? For my diamond pythons and my skinks, uh, I'm using all these, what they're called, these deep heat halogen bulbs, right? There's no light in this bulb. It's just, it just emits heat. I don't care about the lighting aspect of it because I already have lighting in my cage. Right, so I don't care about that. But what I had to do was because this cage was not already fitted with them, um, the cage has belly heat and it does have radiant heat. Well, the other ones have radiant heat panels um, and has a light. Um, but again, I had to install the lighting fixture itself. So here, here's what we did. I took one of these uh, pro ceramic lamp holders. Okay, I took one of these um, Arcadia. So I mounted it up here, and then because with the skinks I don't need it, but with the pythons you need because snakes tend to wrap around the bulbs, I had to get one of these heat cage, uh, these heat lamp cage things, and that's it. I just quickly put it in with the help of a soldering iron to make the, for PVC cages, guys, you don't have to drill them out with drills. Any PVC cage you have, you want to make a hole in it for wiring or for whatever reason, soldering iron works really well. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing, I'm putting these fixtures with these DP bulbs, a 50 watt bulb, and I'm looking to get... I'm going to get a piece of slate for the diamond pythons and the skinks to stay on to, uh, you know, get them to their whatever body temperature they want to get to. But it's going to probably be in the high 80s, probably 88 to 90 degrees. It's going to get pretty warm. Only on one side of the cage. The other side of the cage is going to be the cooler side of the cage. So, yeah, I'm installing them in these six cages here. And this is going to be for diamond pythons. And hopefully it's going to be for a total of two cages of skinks, which I'll tell you guys a lot more about in a later video. So uh, this is a first shipment I've never used. I got to put a probe on here too. I'm going to get thermostats, which reminds me, Helix, Helix uh, thermostats. I'm a big fan of Helix thermostats. If you use them, uh, the company is now out of business. Jeff, who ran Helix, he just can't get the parts, and when he can, they're super expensive. So uh, Helix is going bye-bye. So thank God I only have like 30 of them. That shouldn't cause me any problems at all. So, but I will hook up a probe to all these fixtures as well. And uh, I'll keep you guys posted. I'm hoping it's going to really help with my diamond python productivity this year. Hey, before you all get back to doing beach and rollerblading, I just want to thank you all again for joining me on video number 47. Hope to see you later this summer when I'm going to have some really amazing animals available. But until that time, I hope the rest of your summer is filled with Kenergy. Who has the best YouTube channel? Me?